So what we want to do now is 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. Now, when, remember, guys, what I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to solve. That means I want to find the solutions that make this quadratic equation true. I want to find the roots, right? So before, ladies and gentlemen, if I had like x plus 4 equals 0, when I wanted to solve for x, what did we do? We did this to the inverse operation, right? And we, we isolated the variable. That was the important thing. We wanted to isolate the variable. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how many I have two variables here, right? So you, we can't isolate both of them. You can only isolate one variable. So therefore, when looking at this problem, I'm, I know that I'm going to have to work it into factoring. I'm going to want to factor it first. Then we'll use the zero product property, which I'll re-explain. So first thing I want to do is factor it. And what I noticed was my a is greater than 1. So therefore, I know I'm going to have to do an extended factoring technique. But I'll try to work through it a little bit quicker. So we know that this is a quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c. a times c, 4 times negative 6, is negative 24. b is 5. What two numbers multiply to give me negative 24, but add up to give me 5? Well, so we take a look at all the factors of negative 24. And you could say 8 and negative 3, right? So then I rewrite my equation. 4x squared plus 8x minus 3x minus 6 equals 0. Is there a um, numeric difference? Is there a value difference in these two equations? No. Could you say 4 is equal to 2 plus 2? Yeah, they look, they look different, but their value are, is the same, right? Is 8x minus 3x the same as 5x? Yes. So the only reason, Ronnie, why I do that is so then I can do a fact, so I can factor by grouping. Because now, instead of having three terms, I rewrote this problem having four terms. When I have four terms, I can follow the process of factoring by grouping, which tells me to only worry about factoring, the, factoring them in two groups. So I factor the first two groups. What do these have in common? They have a 4x in common. When I factor out a 4x, I'm left with an x plus 2. Here, I can factor out a negative 3. When I factor out a negative 3, I'm left with an x plus 2 equals 0. You guys kind of see what I just did with that? So I factor each one of these separately out. I factored a negative 3 out of these two terms, and I factored a 4x out of these two terms. Yes, I did. I, yeah, I, when you're factoring out, it's kind of like the same thing as like dividing out. Okay? So you're like dividing out a 4, which will just leave you with a 2. Now I look at these two terms, and I say, just like, remember how I put these in brackets, and I said, what do these have in common? Let's put this in brackets. What do these two now have in common? x plus 2. So you factor out an x plus 2. And what's left over is in the red, right? So now you have x plus 2, so you're left with a 4x minus 3 equals 0. And so then what I was trying to tell you guys is a times b equals 0. That's what we call the zero product property. Because when you have a product that equals 0, you can you apply the zero product property, which states if you have any two numbers, factors, whatever, that equal zero, then one of them has to equal zero. So we say a equals zero or b equals zero. So what that does is that allows us to write this as x plus 2 equals zero and 4x minus 3 equals zero. Now, are these linear terms? Can we solve them like I did in that first problem in algebra 1? Yeah, you just isolate the variable, right? Undo what's happening to the variable. Here, add 3. Divide by 4. x equals 3 fourths. So we have two answers, right? And by looking at a graph, it's possible for our um, parabola to have two different answers. All right, any last questions on that? It's a process, and it's a, uh, it's a process.